Money Talks, brought to you by Chase Wealth. Thank you for coming in live today. Very welcome, no problem at all. And good reason, of course. Uh, absolutely. Oh my goodness, it's almost like on a on a minute by minute basis, things are changing when it comes to to finance and money and this uh, so called energy bill crisis. Martin Lewis uh, this morning described it as being on the scale of a pandemic. I mean, do, do you think it is that bad? And is it that bad over here? Well, c- certainly. I mean, the, the, there are. Um, we know what the price rises are going to be, um, kicking in from September with a forty three point nine percent increase. Increase on in, in in gas bills, so yeah, it is a significant thing that we need to consider. If it's on the scale of the pandemic, um, maybe he was just trying to you know grab a bit more attention, but mm. attention needs to be paid to it. So so fair play to him. Oh, it, it is quite a scary time, it really is, and that's why Paul is with us today uh, because we want to answer any questions you might have about your finances, about essentially you know sort of how we can get through the next few months. And this is something that obviously you deal with on a daily basis with people coming to see you, so you do have some handy hints and tips and tools, don't you? That's that's right. Yep, yeah. we uh, we help people from the, through the whole range of financial services, from the investments and the buying the houses, right through to budgeting and, and everything else. Excellent. So, what sort of things could you answer for people today if they've got questions about what sort of stuff? Well, we can talk uh, obviously mortgages. I think we've already had a question about uh, mortgages and about how, whether or not it's too late to actually fix an interest rate, which I'll happily answer uh, when we when we go on to that. Um, I've been looking into the energy crisis. I've been looking at what the Ireland government are looking to do in terms of their support. What Manx Gas have got on their website in terms of those sort of things um, and some top tips from Net Zero and from uh, Energy Saving Trust in the UK where you can actually try and reduce your energy bills. Now, a lot of them are quite small amounts but quite small amounts can add up. So you are listening to 1 to 3 with Christy and with my guest Paul Chase who is here with us from Chase Wealth. We are talking about this this essential energy bill crisis which is leading to effects on every aspect of our lives and that's the thing isn't it Paul that's what's quite scary about it is because it's energy that affects every aspect doesn't it? Yeah absolutely it's not about whether you choose to to, to go and buy a house or not buy a house wherever you are you have to use energy and and the, the fact that it's going up so significantly uh, in cost is, is really going to affect people. And so do the producers and so do the shops and so do the restaurants and so they're going to pass on those sort of increases yeah, to the rest of us. Absolutely they have to and the cost of living therefore does, does go up and up and up and up and and on the background of inflation, which is already at record highs as well, um, driving up interest rates. Yeah, and what we're going to come to in a minute uh, related to interest rates, we're going to talk about mortgages, but I just want to mention something else that uh, your counterpart, Martin Lewis, said this morning. He also said that he believes it is the government alone who could help by putting more money into people's pockets. That's in the UK, obviously. Do you think our government should be doing more? I think they're going to have to. Uh, and I, I believe, actually, they've actually stated, uh, Alex Allenson, as the Treasury Minister, said that there will be a statement in October. They're working behind the scenes. Alf Cannon actually reiterated that as well. They said that they've, they're, they're working on something um, for, for, to come out. Obviously, there was the energy uh, benefit scheme earlier in the year, which helped uh, a number of people, but quite a low number of people. But I, I think we need to have something a little bit more dramatic, given the fact that we've, we've faced a... Uh, increase earlier in the year uh, for gas prices and electricity prices and we've got this big increase coming in September. Which is, it is really quite scary and I'm guessing you've probably had a lot of people coming in to see you about this because there, there is going to be a lot of fear around at the moment. It certainly has affected the way people are looking at their finances in general. So people that are coming in to talk to us about potentially buying a house, they're now factoring in the fact that they think costs will be going up. They understand that the banks are tightening their criteria, so therefore they're not going to be, be lending as much. And as we know, the property market on the Isle of Man over the last three years has shot up in terms of prices. So it's those three factors are making it a lot more difficult. OK, so let's come to that then, the property market, because some of us have mortgages and uh, if you didn't necessarily get a fixed rate, this could be a potentially scary time for you. We did have a message in from Tony and Douglas who says, is it too late to fix a mortgage? It's never too late to fix a mortgage. Fixed rates are available um, from all of the, all the five main lenders on, on the Isle of Man. What's happened is that over the last couple of months, the interest rates led by the Bank of England increases um, have actually now gone up what the banks are offering. So if you're in, in, in a position where you think is now the time to fix, I would suggest now is probably the time to fix. Um, if you want to speak to a mortgage advisor, go and see your, your own lender. They will have a range of options available for you. Whether you fix for two years, five years, there's some seven-year deals and there's some even 10-year fixed rate deals, which I would never recommend, simply because it ties you in for far too long with far too big a penalties. Um, But there is a range of options available for you. So yeah, it would make sense to go and speak to your provider now. 
And I know we've covered this before, but for anyone who hasn't heard it previously, you say there's a range of options. We are at somewhat of a disadvantage here on the Isle of Man in not having quite so many choices, aren't we? That's right. We have five main lenders. There's a couple of bespoke lenders, but five main lenders. They are the recognisable high streets, that the sort of banks that you'll see in the UK. But certainly in the UK, we, you know, upwards of 200, 250 different lending choices. And we've got five, five lenders over here, simply because of the size of the population and the fact that they that there's not enough market share to go around for any more lenders to really be there what it does give us is the advantage of the fact that those five are very aware of what each one of them each other is, are doing in terms of offering the, the benefit packages the free valuations and the, the the actual interest rates so we do see some competition between them quite uh, quite fierce and and we're expecting one bank to actually make a move and move drop their rates down slightly just to become slightly more competitive in the current market so would you say then considering what has happened because a lot has changed even in the past week or so uh, would you say it is still an okay time to look at buying a property or should you sit tight for now? I think it's always a good time to look at buying a property. The, the alternative is is, is to rent uh, or to live with with, uh, with with family, which is equally fine. I've got no uh, no no criticism of people living with their family. Certainly, um, you know, when I came back from university, I lived with my mum and dad, but I was determined to get on the property ladder as soon as I could. Um, and realistically, even though prices have gone up, as long as we're realistic about what people can borrow and make sure that given the fact that the cost of living crisis is you know, um, coming through, uh, to make sure that people are being sensible, they're planning and they're preparing and they're budgeting and managing their finances sensibly, then yeah, it's a great time to buy a house. Well, we'll get some tips from you on budgeting in just a few minutes. But I, I guess the other thing I want to ask, we're talking about fixing your mortgage for several years here. Um, I'm fixed into a mortgage, thank goodness. I'm very, very fortunate that I managed to do that and fixed into it for a few years. Uh, am I likely to come out of it and go, oh my goodness, now I've got to pay a fortune? Do you think this is going to go on for quite some time? I know it's hard to say, but... It's it's, it's very difficult to say. The, the sort of general indications, and, and we do look to what the banks are actually offering people uh, to show us some sort of an indication of, of what they think certainly is going to happen. And they've got a lot of people punching a lot of numbers, uh, 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 most... Uh, quite a lot of the, the time, um, they're actually offering fixed rates from around about 3.3, 3.4 for five years. Now, that says to me that the banks, who we know don't like to lose money, but they believe that actual interest rates aren't going to shoot up through the roof, that they're going to be settling around the 3, 3.5% mark for certainly the next five-year period. So that would, to me, suggest that if you come out of your rate in five years, there'll be deals maybe slightly higher than the one that you got um, when you actually went into it in the first instance, but actually not through the roof. And you'll have plenty of time time to plan for it to know exactly what the mortgage payments will likely be when you do come out which is great to know because essentially that is probably going to be your biggest outlay isn't it on a monthly basis is something like a mortgage yeah absolutely notoriously it it is the you know banks will allow up to pretty much half of your net income coming in to actually pay out on a mortgage or or various other debt Um, so yeah it's it's the biggest practical thing that you can do make sure you're on the best mortgage rate you possibly can do we we talk about how you can save money for for, to to sort of compensate for the energy prices going up Your mortgage is the biggest expense, so make sure that's correct. Uh, We're trying to give you some hints, tips, advice about how you can maybe save some money, plan for the future in this crisis we're having at the minute, financial crisis. A lot of it obviously to do with these energy bills that just keep going up and up and up. Paul, I'm going to ask you a very straightforward question here. What if I can't pay my bill? Well, um, people are finding themselves in that situation. Um, we I did a bit of research. I, I looked on the the Bank's Gas website just to see if there was any sort of options on there for them. And and there is a statement on there which basically says um, that Bank's Gas will continue to offer payment plans and will make specific provisions for those who require extra support. Customers can register as a priority priority care customer, and we will assist them with tailored payment plans, safety checks, prioritising callouts, and energy saving advice. So so really, Bank's Gas have said talk to them. You know, if you can't pay your bill, don't just ignore it or, or, or worry about it. Speak to them. And, and from the sounds of what they're offering here, they'll actually work out some sort of a payment plan with you. Which is excellent. And also, we were hearing yesterday in the news from the Manx Credit Union. They're also a useful organisation to be aware of too, aren't they? Yep, absolutely. The guys at Manx Credit Union, um, we, uh, in fact, one of the guys I work with sit on sit on the panel there at the Manx Credit Union and uh, they do a great job. Uh, they provide uh, banking services to people and loans to people that maybe don't have... Uh, standard banking um, and what they've actually come out with is a an idea to have an energy fund a separate bank account running alongside your your normal credit union bank account so that you can actually put money aside now very much like a christmas club for when the bills actually get a bit more expensive and then you can use that money at that stage so so i know um i, I believe you were talking to them as well and uh, so yeah, the manx credit union guys have, have come up with this idea and i think that fundamentally that is the principles of financial planning 
planning ahead, making sure if we know that this 45% increase is coming and we know it's going to be a cold winter, then we need to make sure that actually we're not spending on things now uh, where actually we could save that money and use it when, when times are going to be a bit harder. And this is something you have been talking to us each time you've come in. You've talked about planning, about saving, about looking to the future, which is the best thing you can do to protect yourself, really. Uh, But with regards to energy bills, there are other ways, really, aren't there, where we can look at to reduce our bills if we look at like the the property itself? Yes, absolutely. Um, And the government have got uh, on their Net Zero website, something else I looked at uh, um, before I came on today, uh, they've got quite a lot of tips, that things that you can do around the house, things like spending less time in the shower, um, so they recommend sort of a four minute shower. I'm not sure my wife would agree with that, <laughs> but um, certainly I think that's how long it takes her to wash her hair. But um, draft proof windows and doors, switch off appliances on the standby mode. They, they believe that that actually is quite a big expense um, that, that you could uh, you could save money on. Um, things like half filling the kettle rather than boiling a full kettle it's, it's obvious common sense stuff but it's things that you kind of forget about and you just um, you just sort of carry on unless you're sort of consciously uh, uh, considering them using your washing machine on a 30 degree cycle um, and things like that and as I say I was also quite um, uh, pleased to see that the government do offer things they've got an energy efficiency grant which uh, can actually provide you up to a thousand pounds towards improvements that you want to um, make to your home to, to provide uh, more energy savings um, that's on the DEFA website if you people want more information they've got an energy check as well so you can actually organize for someone to come to your home and check to see where energy efficiencies can be made um, they've got an led lighting initiative assistance to provide eligible households with free led light bulbs and we know led light bulbs are actually better than than the sort of traditional ones um, and various different um, uh, things that they're sort of suggesting that we can do just to try and save money now the thing is this is not going to wipe out the increases which we're going to be seeing but a it's good for the planet and it sort of will move, uh, take the edge off the extra increases. If uh, as long as you know, people um, can can do small little things like that to save a bit of money and see see results, um, then I think that will be a popular thing. It will help because at the end of the day, these increases are by the thousands. You know, when it comes down to it on an annual basis, and but these will save at least some hundreds. You know, Exa- when it exactly. all adds and up, and that's that's really the thing. It's, it's not going to solve the whole problem, but it will it will provide an amount of saving. Um, and it, as I say, it is good for the planet. It's going to save energy, and that's what the whole aim really is of the the net zero uh, campaign. Paul we're not trying to scare people though with this obviously there's a lot in the news that feels very very heavy and it does feel it does feel quite scary I have to say but there are things to to bear in mind so for instance I think um, the Isle of Man to a certain extent is in a better position than the UK in some aspects isn't it? Yeah absolutely I mean obviously we we, we can't filter out the the price increases uh, but if we look at society as a whole we've got a lot uh, smaller unemployment figures Um, we've got uh, Certainly in the UK, um, the, the biggest uh, concern is really the people that are on benefits and people that are that are of pensionable age because they've got a fixed income. They can't go out and get a new job and do something different. So so that's where a lot of the, uh, the, the sort of fear is being sort of generated from. Having said that, the price increases are, are real. They are happening on the Isle of Man, so we do need to be prepared for them. And that's really the sort of message that we're making out here is, is be prepared. So what should we start doing today? Well, as I've always say, you've got to make a plan. You always have to make a plan. You've got to look at your finances and understand them exactly what you're actually spending out. Make the savings where you can. So if your mortgage is not on the best rate, we still have clients come to see us that are on this bank standard variable rate. They'll have known they'll, they'll have known this uh, over the last couple of months because every month they will have received a letter saying that your monthly payments are going up. If you're in that position, go and get a fixed rate like the uh, the, the caller earlier sort of asked whether that was still possible just to stop the any further increases. So the mortgage, as we've mentioned in this program, is your biggest monthly expense. So make sure that is the very best deal that you can get. Um, Aside from that, look at everything else that you're spending. So make sure you know what the £10 going out to uh, a a certain uh, company is for. And do you actually use it? Do you utilise it? If not, cancel it. And if Mm -hmm. there's a cancellation period, then start the cancellation period. Don't just keep putting it off because you think you're never going to get rid of it. Um, Just make sure you see what you're spending. Take advantage of deals um, and just be conscious of the money that's coming in and money that's going out. It's as simple as that. And that, that was the best advice I got from you all when I came to see you about mortgages in the first place was just, do you know what? Download a bank statement. Go through absolutely everything on it for the month and take a note of what you're spending here and there. I mean, you a little while ago you were in, you were talking about, for instance, the price of, of goods that you might buy if you buy bulk 
exactly. you can save an awful lot of money that way. Yeah, abso- absolutely. And it's, it's the little luxuries that can add up as well. People think, seem to think if they just buy a £3 coffee, it's a £3 coffee. But if you have three of those a week, then it really does start to add up. So so take in, you know, maybe buy the slightly nicer coffee at the supermarket and take that into work. You know, it's, it's those sort of things where you can actually uh, start saving. And, and over time, they will actually save you quite a lot of money. Yeah, exactly. And you have tools on your website, don't you, as well, that can help people with this? We do. On the Financial Options website, we actually have a budget planner, which you it's an online budget planner, so you can you can utilise it online or you can just download it, print it off, uh, stick it on the fridge and, and just keep track of what money is coming in and, and going out again. Um, I mean, one thing I often talk about is, is what money's going out. But you've also got to look at what money's coming in. You need to make sure that actually you're getting paid everything you, you do. It's amazing sometimes when we see people for a mortgage and we sort of say, they say, I'm on this salary. And I say, well, your weight slip doesn't show that. And for whatever reason, they're on the wrong tax code or something's not happened. So so check out what's actually coming in as well. That's a really good, that's really good advice, actually. I hadn't thought about things like that as well. So there's all these little elements People that you can do. People just assume they're getting paid the right thing. You've got, yeah. to, you've got to make sure. And so, and also, we can come to you, can't we, and talk to you in person. So, if you've got any kind of specific questions, we can arrange a meeting with one of your team as Absolutely, well. Absolutely, yep. They've all got different sort of aspects of specialism as well, don't Pre- they? Precisely, as a company, we we, we specialise in in every different area from mortgages, lifestyle, financial planning, investments, pensions, uh, insurances. So, we've got a, an expert in all of those fields. And what about the idea? We're talking about you know sort of what you do if you can't pay your bills. What if there's kind of a, a large sum that you can't cover? Should we look at things like loans at this time with everything that's going on there's 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 always ways of looking at a, a different situation everyone is everyone is is sort of unique so so there's different ways of dealing with things debt consolidation loans is a thing that, that a lot of people maybe are, are looking to reach for at the moment to try and bring down the cost of you know their monthly expenditures um yes it's certainly possible there are interest rates even though rates have gone up they're still relatively low if you go back you know, 15 years or so, um, the Bank of England base rate was above 6%. So we're still at 1.75 now, um, but and maybe slightly going up. But interest rates are still historically relatively low. It's just that we've got used to them being really low. And that's the difference. We just had a message and I just have to read this because I'm just going to sort of quickly pre-read it to make sure it's okay to read. This is Tony and Douglas actually says, uh, thanks for the advice. A practical idea for the elderly wear thermal underwear and you know what it might sound almost comical but you're absolutely right tony because that means you can turn your heating down a degree or two yeah absolutely that's that's the danger of of all these scare stories on the news is that people really will think that they've got to keep the heating off and and you know as i think hopefully we've described today there are ways of managing your finances so that you can actually make sure you are heating and as those famous uh, famous phrase at the minute heating and eating and that's really the key exactly uh paul thank you as ever for coming in and sharing your advice just remind us again where we can find you and your team and, and get hold of you. Yep, yeah, we're Chase Wealth and Financial Options on Prospect Hill in Douglas. Chase Wealth, celebrating 25 years of providing advice on mortgages, protection, investments, pension and cash flow planning to island residents. Money Talks on 1 to 3.